100 kilometers of running over seven peaks with 6,400 meters of elevation gain and very technical terrain, all in one day. This is Ultra Trail Snowdonia. Well, here I am at the start line of Ultra Trail Snowdonia, considered one of the toughest within the Ultra Trail series. Builders beautiful beyond belief, savage beyond reason, not for the faint-hearted. Yikes. When you say it like that, and I've got, well, over 100k ahead of me and over 6,000 meters of elevation gain, yeah, you gotta wonder what I'm doing here. But anyway, there's more to this event than first meets the eye, so let's rewind to some five months ago when James and I first entered the event and started training for it. All right, well, if you're watching this, then that means that Future Mark has thrown to me, or stood on the start line in Clamberis, North Wales, which is an odd thought, I know, and pretty hard to imagine, because that means that I've managed to prepare myself to run over 100 kilometers over a ridiculously hilly terrain, which is mad, especially considering I've just logged into my Training Peaks account for the first time in a very long time, which is where I've always logged all my training and it's continued to do so, even though I'm not necessarily training as such. And it's quite possibly got the lowest fitness score I've ever seen on it, almost in single digits. So I've got a lot of work to do. And what makes things worse is that I'm already a few weeks behind James, who seems to be knocking out some impressive runs already. So I've got a lot of catching up to do. Whoa, hang on there, Mark. I'm not sure you need to catch up with me. I mean, I'm two years post-retirement now and uh, my fitness is at an all-time low. Literally, I don't think I've ever seen uh, my fitness numbers as low as they are on Training Peaks. And I've been tracking my fitness on there for years. Uh, I mean, I retired two years ago. I've moved house from SA to UK. I have uh, started a new career, renovated a house, had three kids in quick succession. Uh, and yeah, of course there's the retirement thing from professional triathlon too. So all of those things combined mean I am at an all time low and the effects have been really unfit, have actually been really real. Uh, I've been feeling really lousy and uh, well, let's just call it what it is. I've been depressed. I have suffered with a bit of depression and struggle with it. I've got professional help and I've changed a few things in my life. But one of the main things I needed was to get some balance back in my life and get fit again. Um, and to do that, I needed a challenge. Ow. Another problem with running all the time that people don't talk about is the clothes pile. I am washing clothes constantly. Feeling my age. Hey Cody, how's the fitness going? Yeah, getting fit. Look at this. Done a pretty good job there. Look at that fitness. Flying. Three big weeks of running, consecutive days, big runs. Now these things really hurt. <sighs> good few months into my training now and uh, ramping it up. I've got up to 75 k's running this week which is actually roughly my weekly mileage when i was a pro and i'm not doing any of the swimming or running or biking but still back on track feeling pretty fit i am really looking forward to the race now getting exciting now it's getting real just finishing off my last run of the week my first 100k run week in a very 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 long time i actually feel pretty darn good look at this that is dry stuff. A little treat. I am living on these things on long runs. A little chew from uh, Precision Fuel and Hydration. Oh, what? Look at that fitness. Look at it climb. I thought I'd pause for a second and just run you through how I'm going about my training, um, which you can see here. It, there is a slight method to the madness, although it may seem like I'm heading out and just doing crazy runs all the time to get myself ready for this. Um, I mean, it does to me as well at times. However, it's really important that I don't burn myself out uh, because as I said, I'm trying to do a lot in a short space of time here and that could be 
very easily done. So whilst I am tracking this blue line, my fitness, which is very addictive, what I'm also tracking are these pink lines and these yellow lines. Pink line being my fatigue, yellow line being my form. And you'll see at points where the fatigue goes right up through the roof where I'm doing tons of miles and the form drops down because of the fatigue. But what's important is I then recover and allow that fatigue to come down, the form to come back up and then push on again. And that is how you overload and improve your fitness. Right, well, here we are, the night before Ultra Trail Snowdonia, in the midst of um, this madness, uh, it's organized madness. I am trying to sort out all my kit. Um, there is a lot of it. There's a ton of mandatory kit, understandably so. It's gonna be climbing over a load of mountains tomorrow. So let's run through some of it quickly. So I've got waterproof jacket, waterproof trousers. I've got a second warm layer. I've got some tape. I've got a fork. I've got... Um, I think that's everything. Now I just need to figure out how to uh, get it all in there. You will probably notice though that I'm here on my own and unfortunately, yes, James hasn't been able to come to Snowdonia and that's because he's unfortunately injured his foot. So whilst his training was going very well, sadly his foot's given in on him. Well, that's not good. Sad face. Ouch. Yeah, sadly, he's not entirely sure what he's done to it. Obviously, it's not okay to be running 100k on and obviously not over a bunch of mountains. So, yeah, absolutely gutted for him. And obviously, I'm super bummed to not be running with him tomorrow and have his company out there. Talking of which, I should probably go grab some food and lay my head down and start dreaming of those mountains. How are you feeling? I'm a bit nervous. Yeah. It's just knowing it's going to hurt. <laughs> Let's get ready to go. Now we're underway, let's take a peek at the route I'm undertaking. Starts from Clamberis with a climb up to the highest point in Wales, Snowdon. I will then work my way up and over six more mountains, taking in countless stunning trails and technical ridges. There will be seven checkpoints combined with aid stations on course, which all come at the base of each climb. Then the real nail in the coffin comes at 68 kilometers as the route heads back up Snowdon before taking on two more mountains. the first big descent of the day down from Snowdon. So I'm a little over 10k in now. This is a 5k descent with some of the gradients kicking up to 30%. This is where the damage can be done and I know that from previous experiences out here in Snowdonia on the mountains. So I try to make sure I prepare as best as possible for this. So to prepare myself for this crazy amount of elevation and the descents, the killer, my plan was to head off into the mountains uh, because sadly I don't live in the mountains, albeit a very hilly area. It is not Snowdonia by any means. 
Uh, great intentions, but sadly, life has just got in the way and time is slipping away from me. I've been busy on weekends and just haven't been able to go. So I've had to get a bit creative with my training. Um, whether that creativity works or not, I'm not too sure, but I'm confident or I'm putting some confidence into it. So one is that obviously I'm just trying to get some good volume in and I'm doing some pretty big runs now. I'm also trying to do them on consecutive days. So I'm actually kind of condensing all the running into just a few days. Um, so I may be doing 80 to 100K in a week, but I'm doing it over the course of literally four days. So I might do like 20K, 20K, 35K, 15K or 20K. Um, so a heck of a lot in a short space of time. Uh, which obviously is pretty hard going, not allowing my body much recovery time. Um, the other thing I'm doing is trying to obviously run all off-road and all hilly, um, which means a lot longer on my feet. And I'm also starting the week or some of the weeks by doing hill reps. So I'm literally just running straight up and down a hill to try and create that fatigue, get myself stronger. But I'm also, because I know I don't live in the mountains, I'm running really hard downhill to create that muscle damage and fatigue, which then I'm then carrying into some of the future runs. So actually I'm running sort of an 80K to 100K week with serious muscle damage in my legs, which I'm hoping is gonna prepare me for some of those ascents at Sodonia. Well, knowing that I have a little under 90 kilometers still to go, I've tried to set out very conservatively. I'm aware that rushing and racing early on can destroy your day, so I'm taking this seriously. So much so, I was in fact one of the slowest through the first aid station. A few seconds lost here could potentially save me minutes or hours later on. Now, as I head up over the glitters, I found myself in a small group, which is great for morale, but I'm conscious it could affect my pacing if I don't pay attention. The second checkpoint and aid station came after a very steep descent over loose scree, but right ahead of us was another almighty mountain with over 1,000 meters of elevation gain. There might be a theme here. Time to fuel up and get cracking. A long extent now, it's very fragile. It's probably the least technical canyon today. Um, oh, I've got to be honest, my legs are uh, quite sore, some poles that come out on the descent to sort of take a bit of load, a bit of weight on. This is a big milestone on course. This checkpoint comes at around halfway and also serves as a bag drop area, meaning I can access a personal bag I dropped off on the morning of the event. In there I have spare clothes, blister plasters, electrolytes, chews. Now this couldn't have come at a better time either. Since the first kilometer, I've been struggling with a dodgy stomach, feeling like I might vomit each time I eat or drink. I've also been looking forward to breaking the back of this thing, taking a few minutes to compose myself and also escape the heat um, one of my poles has 
jammed. Really annoying. Can't can't lock it out. I really need to. <laughs> so I'm like using one pole on the climbs at the moment. It's not ideal. I really think I'm gonna need the two from here on. Right. Go. Gotta say, I'm in a bit of a battle today with myself. Just, I don't, I don't know whether it's just my mind, but just everything seems to be going a little bit wrong. Like, just had a bit of an icky tummy all day. I had to stop at the portal. First one, first aid station. Probably gonna have to do again here, which I don't normally really have to do. And therefore, not really eating as well as I should be. And then, I had a stumble trying to get the GoPro out to film and avoid some uh, other people climbing and uh, so I twist my ankle, really stupid, literally in the first 10k and now it's kind of like, it's all wobbly and obviously I'm going on loads of technical stuff so, oh man. I don't know if you can see that, but my goodness, this is one hell of a view. Take my mind off the stomach issues anyway, for the time being. be honest, my legs are really sore on the descents, more than I was hoping. It just suddenly came on. Uh, I'm also just on my stomach still, rubbish. I'm not really eating as much as I should be. It's kind of hurting as a result. Ah, <laughs> come on. Of Snowden. I'm not in a good way. My stomach is being a today. I'm very aware that I haven't eaten enough because of that. I'm trying to, but I feel like I'm going to vomit. It's going to be a really, really tough last 20, 25k. Up here, turn off, and then I've got two more climbs. Come on. I hit a serious low patch at the top of Snowdon and crawled down the first section of Ranger's Path from the summit. Man, I could have done with James's company here. Instead, I befriended Oscar from Sweden. We barely said a word to one another, but he knew the deal. By sticking together, we could help each other around. Power in numbers and all that. With two more big mountains to come and over 1,500 meters of elevation, I was aware that I needed to fuel. But my stomach was having very different ideas. If I'm honest, I'm not entirely sure what my body wanted in this aid station or what it was about to do. It's just my I like, vomit every time I
At this point, I was thinking, can I do this? 23K to go? That's a long way. Do I want to do this? How steep will it get? Can my legs take another descent? This is rough. I tried to break the course up into manageable chunks in my head. Snowden was the last big challenge, but in reality, I have two huge mountains to go. It is heating up. Woo. Dipping my head and uh, cap and everything. And now uh, each stream I come across, I'm trying to keep body, well, keep all body temperature down. Whoa. A little over 15k to go. I think I can do this. Sorry for all the doom and gloom and the moaning today. Has been a tough day. On top of doing the ultra. So, oh, I'm getting there. Got myself into a little rhythm here. And this is stunning. Oh. Come on, let's get to that finish line. Are you feeling? All right. From the home stretch now? Yeah. You're smashing it. I think I might cry on this descent, but I'll get it done. Final climb. Might actually make it down before sunset. What an achievement. Gotta be honest, I am breaking it about the descent there. Oh, my legs are in agony. But still going strong, which is good. So it's been a couple days since Mark's uh, success at UTS. We'll call it success. How's those legs Whoa. feeling, Mark? <laughs> uh, my body went into survival mode for the 24 hours after, um, but I actually surprisingly come out the other side feeling okay. Obviously a little bit tender and walking down the stairs has been interesting, but I'm all right. Lost a couple of toenails. Uh, on the whole, pretty chuffed. Um, I made it round. That was the main goal. I did a lot better than I expected placing-wise. I placed 18th overall. 
And I kind of semi had a goal of trying to get in under 18 hours and I did it in 16, 54, 44. It's very so, impressive. Yeah. Very impressive. I mean, I also, when we started this, I was like, if we can get out, get done before midnight, we'll be doing great. Mm. And that was the goal, which is what, an 18, 19 hours. And Mark's gone and done under 17 hours. It's very impressive. Even, even a friend of mine that lives in Snowdonia, when I told him my kind of semi goal, he was like, Ooh, yeah, wow, that would be pretty impressive if you managed that, mate. I mean, wow. if you're anything under midnight, uh, and I did start to panic, I'm going to be honest, when you told me that. But uh, yeah, so I did it. Phew. Well, you did manage it. You smashed it. I was dot watching the whole day, uh, trying, trying to track you. And I'm not going to lie, I was getting pretty frustrated uh, watching you. I actually went for a run. Way. Yeah, a whole 5Ks. Uh, first run in six weeks and 13 my foot. And the foot is holding up, so uh, Brilliant. probably time to find a new goal. Unfortunately, UTS is gone now, but uh, I will find another goal sooner or later. I have later. to say, mate, I missed you big time out there. There was some serious Aww. low patch. No, I did. I, like, <laughs> I needed you there. Just you know, Even if we weren't talking to one another, just pushing one another on. Um, yeah, did miss you seriously there. Um, I was there which, in spirit. Yeah. Talking <laughs> of which, mate, what are we going to do then? What's the next event? I don't know. I have been trawling the internet and looking for, uh, for the right challenge. I mean, this challenge took me a while to find because, as I said, I'm looking for something that's challenging but not a triathlon because I've been there, done that and I don't want to run a fast marathon because I've been there, done that and also the training is just so specific for something like a marathon PV. I kind of just want something that scares me and challenges me and this was it. It was perfect uh, and it's gone out the window. So something similar, probably an ultra trail run of some sort. I uh, just got to find the right one now. Yeah. Well, and have you? A, have a little look. I think I might go for something slightly shorter for a while. Well, you're not Honestly. going the next step up to UTMB? I mean... <laughs> well, there have been discussions. Maybe try and go to UTMB, but for the short CCC. But the, we'll see. We'll no. see. Uh, I'm not going to sign on the dotted line just yet. So, but um, you heard it here first, folks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I've got to say, I've absolutely... Like, just loved this whole process of training for something new. It was incredibly humbling as well, being out there on course and kind of stepping into the ultra running world. Just, those guys are absolutely insane. The speed at which some of them were descending, even after 100k, was mind-blowing. And it's given me this whole new motivation, something that I want to go after and target. And that is why I'm thinking about things like UTMB in the future. Um, and I've got to say thanks to Training Peaks as well for the help through this. I mean, I just tracking my fitness day in, day out. Every run I came back from, I was like, oh yes, I've improved a bit. And well, I've been, been tracking awesome. mine and it's back down to where it was oh, when we started wow. this whole video in pretty much single figures again. So uh, back to square one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks ever so much for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed the UTS adventure. Yep. So is it Global Trail Running Network now, Mark? I think I'm leaving, mate. I'm off to do trail running. Yeah, now. That's it. Global Trail Running Network or something.